Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. I hope this video finds you healthy and safe in wherever you are at. It is definitely a very interesting time to be alive as a lot of the countries out there are either under a lockdown or in some sort of a movement control order because of the rising number of coronavirus cases. And I'm pretty pretty sure that a lot of you watching this video right now is actually being forced to stay at home and to maybe even work from home. And as someone who has already been working from home in the past year or so, I totally understand what you are going through, the different phases and all that, because I've been through that, okay? And I really wanted to hop on here today to share with you some tips that I've learned along the year on how to be more productive and to really make things work when you are stuck at home and you are forced to work from home. So the first tip that I have for you is to really come up with a new routine or a new system that can work for you. Okay, now think about it that way. All right, previously when you are going to an office to work, you have some sort of a routine or a structure already. So for example, in the morning when you wake up, um, you would you know, get prepared to go to drive or commute to work. And as you work, you would go out for lunch with your colleagues. And after work, you would probably have a meal with a friend, go for some sort of uh, entertainment for a movie or for a special dinner night, and then you will go home and rest. Right, so this was the routine that you had previously when you are able to go out. So now, what do you do when you are forced to stay at home, right? So you need to work out something new, some sort of a structure that you can follow through. Because most of us here has already associated home to rest, to relaxation, to really spending time with friends and family. And it is something that's not related to work. It's not associated to work in your mind at all. So the first thing to do is to really come up with a routine so that you can tell your brain that, okay, now home equals work as well. So I need to make this work for me. And this is also a really great opportunity to also introduce the new habits that you have always been wanting to introduce into your life. For example, if you want to work out, you want to journal, you want to meditate, all these new habits that you want to incorporate in your life, this is the time to really slot them all together to make things work for you. So how I would go about this is I would take out my journal or some sort of paper that I have and I would first draw this vertical line down, okay? And I would put the time that I want to wake up in the morning and also the time that I want to sleep at night. For me personally, I love, love, love waking up at 5 a.m. when the rest of the world is still asleep, when the sky is still dark, when it's still so quiet, so that I have time to really journal and reflect on what I want in life and you know about life in general. So in order to wake up at 5 a.m., I need about maybe six hours of sleep per day. That means that I would have to be asleep by 11 p.m. Okay, this is an ideal day situation, okay? Because we all know sometimes you are forced to really sleep late because of work, because of family, because of yada yada yada. So okay, so 5 a.m. and 11 p.m. For me personally, after waking up at 5, I would do my journal, I would meditate, I would pray, I would read. I love spending at least 2-3 to three hours all to myself. For me, this is my Wendy time, my me time. So I would draw a slot here at about 8 a.m. So that is when I expect myself to really start working, doing things that are for my company and not for myself and then say I would love to have lunch at 1 p.m. and I would come back to work at 2.30 because I like to take a short nap at 2, like a short nap before I refresh myself because you know, I wake up early, I have to have a midday break, right? So after about 2.30 p.m., I would get back to work for about three hours and I would love to do some of my own things in between. Sometimes I post a new social media post, sometimes I read a book. I would always take some break in between that. And at about 7 p.m., that is when I like to have my dinner. And usually for me, I love spending my evenings either doing things with my boyfriend or spending time, you know, just really relax and entertain. So ideally, in the evening onwards, it is all me time, when time, relationship time. Okay, I try not to work in the evening. So you see right now that you draw this vertical line, right? You have some sort of an idea on of 
on what the new routine can be for you. Holy shit! Yeah. Just stay here for the next half an hour, okay? So what I was trying to say is after you have this vertical line drawn in, drawn in, so you can slot down all these things that you want to do in between these different time sessions. For example, in the morning, it's a journal, prayers and workout, and then you shower, breakfast, and get back into work. Like slot all these things in so that you let your brain know that these are the things that you want to be doing day to day when you are at home. The next thing that you can do while you are at home and you really should be doing is to work out. Okay, it is something that's very important because now that you stay home, you don't really walk out of the house to go to your car or go to the train station to commute. You don't walk from the train station or your car to your company or out to lunch. So you are actually being a lot less active than you were before. So it is very, very important for you to actually introduce some sort of a workout routine so that your heart rate can maintain high and you can keep your muscles active. So now that you are staying home, I know it is quite limited, but there are actually a lot of at-home workouts that you can be doing. I personally am following all the workout routines being introduced by my gym on their Instagram account called at Ref Republic. You can totally follow them even if you are not a member in my gym. And there's also a lot of YouTube accounts out there that are sharing Tabata videos, which are super awesome for those of you who are not used to working out. And of course, there's also my favorite YouTuber out there there who does workout videos which is Bloggy Lattice. Check out all these at-home workout videos to keep you motivated at home. The best thing you can do, get a housemate or a family member who is currently living with you to work out with you as well. The next thing that you can do to keep yourself productive at home is to really work on your goals and vision. I know when 2020 started, everyone was like, this is my year. This is the year that I'm going to achieve my dreams. I'm going to start the year strong. I'm going to end the year strong. And then so many things have happened in just the last three months. It is crazy. And I know that a lot of plans have changed and a lot of dreams are being, you know, so distracted that it's forgotten. Because you see, there are so many news out there that are telling us about the virus situation, about how bad the economy is, and all these things, and it can really pull us down. So this is the time that you really have to write down your goals, think about them so that you can focus them back on where it is the most important. Okay, especially since like you say, three months has passed in 2020, it is actually the start of quarter two of 2020. Right? So it is a good chance for you to also reflect on how the past three months have been for you and what you want to focus on in the next three months. Now, I know it's quite hard to really just focus on three months. So what I personally like to do, and I would call this the backward goal setting approach. I actually copied this um, template from the Passion Planner and it's worked very, very well for me. So what I do is really just write this word called goals or my passion or my life in the center. And I'll put out an arrow up to the top left corner and write it lifetime. And here, this is where I list down all my dreams, my big goals, the big, hairy, audacious goal that I have that I want to achieve, you know, in my life. And after finishing all this stuff, I would write another corner that says three years plan, three years goal. So in order to achieve this big lifetime goal, what are the things that I need to do in the next three years that I want to accomplish in the next three years? Okay, list them down on this corner. And then the next thing is to really narrow it down to one year. Okay, what are the things that you can achieve in this one year in order to help you to get to the three years and also your lifetime goal? Okay, so list down all these goals. And lastly, the next three months. What are the things that I can do in the next three months to really help me to get to the big lifetime goal that I have? I really love this template. It has helped me a lot in planning what are my action plans for the first quarter of the year. And I would say like I followed through about three out of four of the things that I want to focus. And I'm really glad about it. Try to really focus about this because these are the goals, these are the vision that is going to help you to be motivated when you wake up every single morning. The next thing that you can be doing at home is to really take this chance to create more content on social media. 
I was just reading this article yesterday that there is actually a 76% increase in the daily accumulate Instagram likes in just the last two weeks, okay? In just the last two weeks. And in fact, there is also a 27% jump in the number of engagement in, on TikTok in just between February to March. Okay, in just such a short time, there is a lot of people being on social media right now. And it's understandable because everyone is stuck at home, we can't do much, so we are just scrolling through on social media to see what everyone else is doing, right? Instead of just spending time to blindly consume all this content on social media, why don't you take this chance to create them yourself? Okay, you see, whether or not you are using Instagram for personal reasons or for business reasons, when you create content on social media, you are actually putting yourself out there. And you are actually also stimulating your creativity juice. When you are taking your photos, you have to look at your angle, you have to you know, think of the filter to use. When you are taking a video, you need to think of what you want to say. And when you are writing a caption, you need to think of what you want to write. And this really helps to exercise your brain. And at the same time, you are putting yourself out there to let people know more about you so that they can remember you. And speaking of remembering you, if you are using social media for a business purpose, it is even more important because you want people to remember your brand, to remember your business so that they can continue to come back to you for business. Okay, it is really a crucial time to create more content online. Instead of just sharing all those news about the stats or like, you know, all the empty aisles on the supermarkets, create content that are true to your brand, that are true to your values, and really just give back to the community at this time. Next up, you can also schedule video calls with your loved ones every day. Just because you are physically being isolated by the rest of the world, it doesn't mean that you have to also isolate your relationship with all these other people that you cannot see on a daily basis. Okay, I personally am an extrovert and being forced to stay indoors all day is really draining me up, but I'm not really like, you know, too sad about it. Instead, I would take this chance to really video call all the friends that I don't really get time to spend time with. And you know, I would try to catch up about their life. I'll see how things are working out for them. Because you know, we are very lucky that we live at this time and technology allows us to do that, to really see our friends and family in front of the camera and talk to them. So please, please make time for your loved ones, even if you are physically separated from them. The next thing that you can do at home is to really work on your financials and also your relationship with money. Now, I know this is the time that a lot of people are affected by the economy, whether you are an employer or you are an employee, there are a lot of uncertainties that are causing a lack of income and it's stressing us out. So this is a very, very important time to really look into your financials because even if it's scary, you need to know what actually is going in and out so that you can better budget. You can think of what are the places, what are the costs that you can cut out for now and where and how you can make more money in life. And there's something that I've learned in the past year about money mindset is that, you know, us humans, we are often driven by fear and greed when it comes to money. You know, we fear that we don't have enough money, so we work really, really hard to get it. Or we greed. We are greedy about all these things that we can have, all this luxury that we can have when we have more money, so we are driven to make more money. But the thing is, when relationship is based on fear and greed, do you think it's gonna work out well? You know, if your relationship with your boyfriend or your girlfriend is being driven by your fear or your greed towards it, do you think it's gonna work out well? No. So this is why I say that you need to work on your relationship with money. As weird as it may seem, you need to show that you love money. Okay, it sounds weird, I know, but you need to tell the universe, you need to tell God that you love money because you want to make the best use out of it to improve the quality of your life and to also give back to the community. You know, send positive emotions and energy into money so that it can come back to you in abundance as well. 
The next thing that you can do at home is to really take this chance to declutter your space. This is something that a lot of people has neglected to do because they've been living at home for many many years, especially if you stay with your family or your loved ones. All the things just keeps coming, keep adding on, coming in and you don't really have time to really declutter and take them out. But it is a very very important thing because the environment that you live in and that you probably currently work in really impacts the quality of your life as well. So I personally practiced decluttering since about 5 years ago when I picked up Marie Kondo's The Life Changing Magic of Tidying Up and honey, my life really changed, okay? I'm not even exaggerating. Because the thing is like when you are able to remove the things that you don't need or you don't want in your life, just take them all out. You're actually able to create more space in your life. And by having more space, I mean that means there's more air that's able to flow into your room and there is more light that's able to come back into your room. Okay, it sounds really vague when I'm saying this, but if you really go through it, take out all those things that you don't need anymore. They might have served you well previously, but you don't need them in your life anymore. Just thank them and throw them away. Okay, um, there are actually a lot of videos out there that can teach you about this Marie Kondo method. And I would say my tip is you don't need to follow all the spiritual things of like thanking your space and like thanking your clothes and all these things. I know some people also follow the method of like, you know, folding their clothes to stand straight in a drawer and all that, which is really efficient. But I think the first thing as a beginner to really start with decluttering is to really just throw the things that you don't need out. So just focus on all that first and you're gonna thank me later, okay? The next thing that you can do is to really learn a new skill during this time. Okay, and I would say that learning a new skill is something that you should be doing every day in your life even when you are not stuck at home. Because you see, us humans, we are very, very lucky that we are blessed with cognitive skills, which means that we are able to absorb a lot of information to really interpret all this complex information and to grow from there. So if you are doing the same thing every single day and you are not learning something new every single day, your brain is going to remain static and your life is going to remain static. Okay, when you learn new skills, your brain is able to expand, it is able to exercise. And because of that, you are able to grow as a person. Okay, either with the new knowledge of the skills that you have, you are going to apply that to your life and your quality of life is able to improve. I personally like to learn through online courses or reading a book. For things that are more concept-wise or knowledge-based, I love to read because you know, reading also enables me to really take my time off the screen and to really just focus on the information that I have. But for more technical things that will help me grow my businesses, I usually like to sign up with a new online course. Find a method that works best for you and learn a new skill today, okay? My next tip for you at this time is to really start an online business. I know, it sounds really counterintuitive to really take this time when the economy is so bad, when there is a lack of cash flow, when there is so much uncertainties out there to start a new business. But honey, just look at it this way, right? At this time of the lockdown of the movement control order, the only businesses that are allowed to operate that are not in the essential services like food or like, you know, post office and stuff like that, are online businesses. And I know a lot of you out there are sick of working for someone else and you dream to have a business of your own one day so that you can do the things that you're passionate about. Maybe you are passionate about selling something or providing a service, or maybe you want to make money online so that you can do the things that you're passionate about at the site when you are free, when you're not making money. Right, so take this time to really start taking action for your dream. Okay, you might not know where to get started. You might not have enough capital or an, or an idea to get started. I've actually made this video that shares about the top 10 business ideas that you can start with almost zero capital. So be sure to check this out. 
okay remember the big companies like Amazon's Disney or even Apple they all started from the comfort of their home so take this chance to make it your Steve Jobs or your Jeff Bezos moment okay don't waste this precious time and just get started and my last idea for you on what to do when you're stuck at home is to really just karaoke or dance because you know at the end of the day life is also about having fun what's the point of working so hard and hustling so hard when you don't get to enjoy life yourself as well so find something that you can do that can make you happy as long as you're not like binging netflix all day to the point that you're not really working or focusing on your dream anymore, I'd say just do it. I personally find that karaoke is really fun because I get to impersonate the singers or the cartoon characters that I'm singing about and I get to dance, shout it all out loud. Just go have fun! Alright, so these are the tips that I have for you on what you can do to increase your productivity at this time of social distancing when you are forced to stay at home. Be sure to leave a comment down below on which idea you are going to take. What is the thing that you are going to do today to make your life more productive? I'm really, really curious to check it out, so be sure to drop the comment down below, okay? And if you do enjoy this video, be sure to subscribe to my channel or check out these two other videos for more productivity and entrepreneurship tips. I really love to see you in my next one, so I'll see you there. Bye! Routine can be for you. The... What is this thing keep falling?